Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sal, and this is another Expedition Log. Today marks the beginning of the closing act of the X-Log Phase 4 Epoch. We kick it off with a new short series on the Baltimore, Maryland region and its surrounding malls. Our focus will be on the overall expanse of Baltimore City today, including brief portraits of the view atop Federal Hill to the beautiful Fells Point, onto a quick stroll through the west side with the tease of an upcoming X-Log through Lexington Market. Finally, we'll venture into the long-abandoned Old Town Mall, a terrifying section of Baltimore with nothing but abandoned and blown-out buildings, which once housed the Bel Air Public Market. I hope you're all well out there, keeping safe and healthy. I've had some space madness being cooped up in my house, itching to get outside to explore, which I've done over the last couple of weeks in Baltimore. But in case some of you still haven't been able to get outside, I'd like to give you all a breath of fresh air with today's episode. So come take a walk with me through Baltimore City. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, my cable company, because I couldn't have uploaded this episode without them. Thanks, cable company. Now Baltimore County Cable TV is Comcast Cable. Hi, I'm Brooks Robinson, and this is Comcast Cable. You've got more because you've got cable. You've got more than 30 crystal clear channels of programming. Sports. Movies. News. Music. You've got continuous traffic and weather reports every morning on Channel 10. You've got community programming from our three community colleges. You've got the Premium Plus Club that pays you back every month. And our monthly cable guide to help you enjoy cable TV more. But mostly it's people, like people here in our Comcast studio. Out on the lines and in your home, making sure your cable service is best. This is Comcast, and you've got more because you've got cable. Welcome to Baltimore's beautiful Federal Hill Park. Federal Hill provides one of the most robust views of the city's inner harbor, and it was originally used in 1795 as an observation tower to spot incoming ships down the Patapsco River. It was then repurposed as a military battery during the War of 1812 and the Battle of Baltimore in 1814 in anticipation of a British attack by sea. At this time, Baltimore was known as Mob Town. During the Civil War, Union soldiers were stationed atop the hill with cannons facing the business district across the basin to strengthen their seemingly fading allegiance to the Union in the north, to show that if this place were to be under siege by the Confederacy at any time, they would sabotage those efforts, sacrificing their city and squashing the Confederate efforts in the process. It was during the Battle of Baltimore, where amateur poet and American lawyer Francis Scott Key was detained on a British ship in the Patapsco River. Inspired by the surrounding bombs exploding in the night sky and terrified not knowing if they had won or lost the battle of Fort McHenry until morning. But seeing the American flag still flying gave him hope. He wrote the poem, Defense of Fort McHenry, which he set to the Anacreontic song by British composer John Stafford Smith. This contrafactum, or joining of lyrics to an existing tune, went on to become the United States national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, made official in 1931. As we make our way down from Federal Hill and traverse around the Inner Harbor, we stop for another fantastic view atop a high-rise in Harbor Point to see some of the old shipbuilding and naval yards that have been used throughout the years. Directly across from here, you can see Locust Point and Tide Point, which house Fort McHenry, the site which inspired America's national anthem. This entire area used to be fully abandoned, but recently underwent a $117 million redevelopment, and now it is completely gorgeous. This view right now is from a balcony at the Sagamore Pendry Hotel in Fells Point, where I had the pleasure of staying a couple of weeks ago. You can see Harbor Place, where we just were, just a few buildings ahead of this view. The Pendry occupies what used to be a warehouse, which was built in 1914, and then went on to be used as the filming location for Homicide, Life on the Streets, from 1993 to 1999. This resplendent neighborhood on the east side of Baltimore's Inner Harbor was once its most productive shipbuilding district providing jobs to hundreds of thousands of people. Between 1850 and 1900, 
Baltimore's population rose from 169,000 to over 508,000. At this time, over 2 million immigrants landed in Fells Point and Locust Point directly across the river, making it only second to New York as the greatest port of entry. While most of these emigrating from abroad hopped right on the B&O Railroad to head west, tons of folks would remain in Baltimore to forge their lives and create families and businesses. By 1893, Baltimore had more millionaire philanthropists than any American city, such as George Peabody, with the Peabody Institute opening in 1866, with a music conservatory, an art gallery, a lyceum for lectures and concerts, and a library, which was more extensive even than the Library of Congress at the time. There were William and Henry Walters, who founded the Walters Art Gallery, and Johns Hopkins, who founded the esteemed Johns Hopkins University, for which I serve as concertmaster and lead violinist for their symphony orchestra. Baltimore has an incredibly opulent past, with tales of riches spanning many decades, and I feel that Fells Point now embodies this richness. It's a beautiful piece of Baltimore, and it happens to be where Fritz and I hang out most when we can. I also rather enjoy staying at the Sagamore Pendry on occasion, which has become my eternal happy place. Fells Point rocks, and if you're ever in Baltimore, make sure to come to Fells. There's so much to see and a ton of great food and beverage to enjoy. From the Broadway section, to the shops along the harbor, to Eat Bertha's Muscles, to the lexicon of street bars and restaurants, Fells comes highly recommended, in my opinion. We're now on the outskirts of Baltimore's incredibly sketchy west side. This area is generally considered to be one of the most dangerous parts of Baltimore City. However, it's still just the edge of that danger. And if we were to venture past the Lexington Market, where we are right now, this is the metro stop for Lexington Market, things would get much uglier much faster. We'll actually be doing just that in an upcoming episode on the Mondawmin Mall, so stay tuned if you like seeing me get into trouble and sketchy situations in dangerous areas. I think you'll like it. As you look around this area, take in all the label scars if you can spot them, like McCrory's Five and Dime, Hutzler's, Hecht's, and Epstein's. What used to be considered the garment district for Baltimore between its golden era from 1860 to 1920 these days, the entire area stinks of mold from the tranche of shuttered storefronts, with spores emanating from the street vents and broken windows, all of which has sat abandoned for quite some time now. But there's still a ton of historical significance in this area, as it houses America's oldest public market. Lexington Market was established in 1782, and despite its enclosed arcade being demolished just recently, the market still stands and has reopened amidst the demolition. I'll be revisiting this place to give you a look inside, because it was closed the day I visited, so I'll have to take another trip out there. This area can be gnarly, and the people that I've tried speaking to on the street either gave me blank stares or told me to straight up F.O. But we'll be making a return to this place to see one of Baltimore's original six remaining public markets with an interior video tour. Make sure you stay tuned for that one, because I'm sure it'll encompass dire levels of sketchiness. But for now, I think it's time we head to the east side to go see the Old Town Mall in all of its decrepit glory. This is Old Town, and this is how I saw it through my Canon 80D back in 2017. Old Town resides in Baltimore City's east side, about a mile east of Mount Vernon and about two miles northwest of Fells Point. Multiple helicopters circling overhead, individuals pumping their bodies full of drugs, and squatters living in abandoned properties, massive rats, and folks trying to solicit themselves for any number of reasons are all pretty common things in this area. Right now we're on the southern half of Old Town Mall. You'll notice this place is in two parts, with the middle having been raised. 
I also find my way into one of the shuttered storefronts, where I come upon some disturbing evidence of what seems to have been a physical altercation, so stay tuned for that in just a few minutes, along with an updated view of this place, which I filmed in October of 2019. The Old Town Mall got its start in 1818 when the Bel Air Market was constructed as the sixth of the city's public markets. As the area grew, so too did businesses, and by 1836 the entire 500 block of Gay Street was full of buildings constructed out of solid brick, of which there were 64 in total. Some of these that still remain are the last examples of buildings using cast iron fronts in their architectural profile. After the Civil War ended, Isaac Benish and Sons took over one of the larger properties and created the Great House. Then in 1904, tragedy struck when a fire broke out at the modern-day Royal Farms Arena in West Baltimore, quickly spreading out of control, destroying most of central Baltimore, extending east through Old Town, and even reaching the Patapsco River harbor front south of Little Italy. Over $100 million of damage was done, destroying over 1,500 buildings. Firefighting brigades responded from the reaches of Philadelphia and Washington, with units en route from New York only to be stopped by traffic. They never made it there. But ultimately, the fire burned so viciously and out of control without being stopped because the fittings the fire departments brought with them didn't fit the hydrants in Baltimore, because there was so much new firefighting equipment spawning all over the country that the fittings were all different in each city. So they had to resort to more primitive means of firefighting, like using horse-drawn carriages and sucking water out of the bay. Ultimately, the fire was extinguished, and the city moved forward. So as we finish up on the south end of the Old Town Mall here, we're going to go meet Brian, and he's going to let us see the inside of Penny Pinchers, and I don't think he wanted me to go into the back of the store like I did, because I saw some sketchy stuff. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe, and to ring the notification bell so you know when I release new content. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Salvatore Amadeo, and on Facebook, at Quite Studios. And also make sure to join the Dead Malls of Discord server. All the links are down below. Thanks, guys. You all rock. Let's go meet Brian. I'm trying to blend in. So I've got my NATO trench coat on. Are you open? When did it tear down? When? Huh? Years. Somebody said next year. Ten. Not open? Do you mind if, I'm, if you're on film? Me? Yeah. Is that okay? What, TV? No, no, just the internet. Okay. Yeah, what's open around here? I see a, I see a pawn shop. Pawn shop. I see, is this church open? Church. That's open? Yeah. This yeah. side doesn't look too good. No, it doesn't. <clears throat> so you guys have like a like a discount store? Was. Was? Yeah. What's inside, can I see? Inside. Can I see? Yeah, equipment. Do you own this? Yeah. Watch your head. Do you ever get anybody in here? No. Be careful. Okay. No, don't go too much. Don't go away. Are there are there animals in here or? No, no, no. Don't I don't 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 no more no more. Do you guys use this as storage? Yeah. It's fascinating. I appreciate you letting me see that. What's your name? My name's Brian. Brian? Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much. You know, at this point in the game, 68 episodes in, I look back on some of my former expeditions, and I can't believe how stupid I was. I don't know this guy. And this is one of the sketchiest areas in Baltimore City. He's got the gate open. I didn't ask him to open it. And I ask him if I could go in. He says, yeah, sure, of course. And then I go right in. He could have closed the door behind me. Who knows what? That blood spatter back there? Who knows what that was? But the point is, guys, if you're going to go out exploring, be safe, be smart, make sure somebody knows where you're at. Because this rat-infested place is not where I want my final moments. Be smart.
1911, back in Old Town, Isaac Benish had renovated his great house into a four-story emporium, with several departments serving shoppers. By the 1940s, Benish was praised as, quote, an orchid for serving all alike, close quote. As he was an early figurehead of the civil rights movement, and during the tenure of his Emporium service, he made it a common practice to hire African Americans to work for him, despite segregation plaguing the country, even promoting the black community in his public advertising against the whims of other local business owners. He ran his business into the early 1960s until it was shuttered. As a direct result from the Baltimore riots of 1968, the Old Town Mall underwent a massive renovation, where over $1.7 million was spent to close the area to automotive traffic, making it more accommodating and visually appealing to pedestrians. New brick was laid over the street, planters were installed, along with new street lamps and towering signs and a clock, all in the Art Deco style. Further, a Kaufman's department store was opened on the site of Isaac Benish's Great House Emporium, now serving as the new anchor for the mall at its rededication. The area would weather through the golden age of malls and quickly go unnoticed as the massive poverty in the direct area, along with wide unemployment, would further castigate the Old Town Mall's image to potential shoppers and deter businesses from operating within the confines of this pedestrian space. Then on July 2nd, 1980, Jim Rouse would open his Harbor Place pavilions to great fanfare. Baltimore's Inner Harbor was once a derelict area awash with abandoned properties and dangerously unstable structures. But Mr. Rouse was hired to redesign the entire waterfront in his project, as he did when he built the City of Columbia and the Columbia Mall, and several other malls, which are beloved amongst dead mall enthusiasts. This new waterfront project and the pavilions would further cast a shadow on the Old Town Mall, and it would formally take this gray ghost in Old Town and turn it into a mall saloon. By the way, stay tuned for a future episode in the coming weeks on Jim Rouse's fantastic Harbor Place pavilions and the gallery at Harbor Place. Really fantastic spots, and I can't wait to show you guys that footage. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following me on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Salvatore Amadeo, Facebook at Quite Studios, and on the Dead Malls of Discord server. Make sure you've joined up because that's where you'll see all of my updates so you know what I'm up to between episodes. Links to everything are down below. Into the 1990s, Old Town was simply forgotten, and by 1997, the Bel Air Market was demolished, along with the entire center portion, including a fountain that was built during the 1968 renovation, and the Kaufman's was shuttered. After this striking blow, of which Bel Air Market owners tried furiously to prevent, the Old Town Mall would further slide into obscurity and would sit abandoned for decades. In 2014, the Kaufman's was sold to private investors for just over $220,000, and it was turned into the Nevermore Haunt, which is a haunted house that opens at the old Kaufman's in the Old Town Mall every Halloween. I do remember driving past and seeing a lot of activity here. They actually sell food and they have a bar, but given current events, I'm not so sure it's gonna be open this Halloween. But if it is, I will be sure to go give it a visit and possibly show you guys what I saw. That's been running for a few years. In 2017, I showed up to the Old Town Mall and this is exactly how it's looked. I showed up with my Canon 80D and I walked around the place with an infrared suppressant trench coat from NATO so I could blend in with my surroundings. The entire area stinks of mold and you get looks everywhere you go. While it was great of that guy to let me in to that discount store and it was super sketchy what I saw inside, as I was walking down the Old Town Mall, there were several people just cooking food and selling it. They weren't street vendors, they were just people sort of barbecuing and you could buy it if you want. I asked how much for the food and the gentleman said, it's too expensive for you, move on. Now, I don't know if that's because I had the ugliest jacket on known to man, but I did feel unwanted here. So I kept moving. However, as I was taking a few static shots with my camera, I was knelt down on the ground. Some dude walked by me and his body brushed up against me, seemingly with purpose. I don't know if he was trying to knock me over or who knows what but I thought that was pretty sketchy. So at a certain point, I decided it was time to get out of the Old Town Mall. 
The flames lit up the sky in East Baltimore. Some of the buildings at Old Town Mall date back more than 200 years. In the late 1960s, the whole area was redeveloped as a pedestrian mall, but after that, most of the buildings in that now former shopping center have been vacant for years, if not decades. Baltimore Mayor Jack Crew has quickly knocked down a massive fire at an historic building in East Baltimore. This was the scene in Old Town Mall just after 7. When firefighters first arrived, flames were shooting from the roof of the building. Additional units were called in to help put out the fire. Old Town Mall has been vacant. A fire broke out at the Old Town Mall. On September 24th, 2019, mostly destroying a vacant building at the south end of the mall. That end is comprised of already vacant structures and a vintage fire station museum, but nothing was in operation at the time of the blaze. So I showed up one month later to see how the old town mall was doing. From a distance, I saw the old Kaufman's was being used as the Nevermore haunt, but there were metal barricades set up and I couldn't go through, presumably only if I bought a ticket. And I wasn't feeling it that day, so I didn't go through. But this place has been in limbo for years, with redevelopment plans announced, then cancelled, then announced, then cancelled, wash, rinse, and repeat. However, the time will come when this place is redeveloped. So if you're in the area, I implore you, just take a drive by so that you can see some of the remaining Art Deco elements from the 1968 renovation. Because it really is a treat to go back in time when you're looking at this place. So if you're in the area, pay it a quick visit. And I mean quick. The community and the city at large are ready to move past this eyesore. And they want change brought to the neighborhood and Old Town. Baltimore City Mayor Jack Young is even pushing hard himself to get the area redeveloped. City planners are looking to preserve a few of the structurally sound buildings, but to raise and rebuild their surroundings. Again, these plans have been made before, back into the early aughts, even some reaching into the final stages of planning. The latest and most hopeful plans come in with the lead of St. Louis-based McCormick Baron Salazar, serving as project lead for a massive $1 billion redevelopment of East Baltimore in its entirety, which they're trying to get the Old Town Mall into the deal as well. Time will tell what comes of Old Town, and when that time comes, I'll head out and I'll take you all on a walk with me to see it. Baltimore City is my home, and I've lived here since the early 2000s when I moved here from New Jersey to attend the Baltimore School for the Arts for violin performance. I love this city, despite its flaws. And although there are lots of scary parts, I believe the charm outweighs the bad. I'd like to thank you all for watching my video. And I want to send a special shout out to my patrons who have helped keep Quite Studios productive and operating through the quarantine. Let's hope that everything goes back to normal soon, because I sure as hell would love to go out on a massive expedition. Regardless, I'll have Xlog69 out within a week or two for all of you. So please stay tuned to my social media for updates. Also, please be sure to join the Dead Malls of Discord server, where we have frequent voice chats, game nights, watch parties, and all sorts of stupid fun. Thanks again for watching, everyone. Stay safe out there, take care, and have a fantastic day.